how the narcissist uses hope against you when hoovering. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. The hoover is a direct assertion of control when performed by the narcissist and an indirect assertion of control when there's a hoover by proxy, when it's done by somebody else. Those are two ways of bringing you under control. Hoovers can take many different forms. For instance, it can be done in person. It can be done by coming and knocking on your door or standing across the road, staring into your house. It can be done by telephoning you, sending you a text message, sending you an email, sending you a direct message on social media. It can be done by th throwing a brick through your window. It can be done by walking past your office window so that you see the narcissist. It can, of course, be done by a friend who may be acting as a lieutenant for the narcissist, turning up and talking about the narcissist in such a way, sometimes asking whether you're going to get back with them, whether you'll speak to them, whether you'll return something to the narcissist. It can be done on a pretext. Hoovers can be benign. They can be malign. The narcissist might contact you expressing concern after hearing that you'd suffered from ill health or offering their sympathy after you've experienced a bereavement. The fact of those instances and that the narcissist has heard of them has caused you to come up on the radar of the narcissist. The narcissism has to assess, are you under control? It concludes that you're not because there's no data available, but then works out that the direct assertion of control is feasible and thus you receive the hoover. On the face of it, it seems like the narcissist is being decent. But all it is, is that you had faded to the position of being painted white again through the affliction of time, and thus, when the narcissism determines that a hoover was appropriate, it's done in a benign way. There are other instances where it's malign. The narcissist contacts you, calling you names, swearing at you, threatening to take certain action against you. A hoover might be by destroying or vandalising some of your property. There are lots of different ways that the narcissist will use hoovers. Hoovers are used to seduce. Hoovers are used in a preventative form to stop somebody ending the relationship. There's the initial grand hoover following your escape to try and draw you back in. There are follow-up hoovers that take place after the demise of the relationship. Lots of different ways that they can occur. Lots of different ways that they're utilised. But the purpose is, of course, the pursuit of the prime aims. First and foremost, to get you under control or to keep you under control, to draw fuel from you by way of a response, and in some instances, access character traits and residual benefits. As part of hoovering you, hope is something that is invariably used against you. Empaths, as a group, are particularly prone to a reliance upon hope. I've regularly explained to people that you should not hope that you should not look to hope, for she is a false mistress. Evidence and action is far more effective and important. Those are the things that you can rely upon. Hope is just a concept. Of course, there are those that say that hope is what enabled them to keep going. But in actual fact, if they'd have utilised logic, they'd have found something far more constructive and useful to rely upon than just hope. It's often said, particularly with regard to certain sports, it's the hope that kills you. And it's similar with regard to the victim of a narcissist. Hope is an eternal product of emotional thinking. Empaths have an addiction to narcissists. This addiction wants to be fed. In order to cause that to happen, the addiction creates emotional thinking, which is essentially undertaking a thought process where logic is absent. It means that the individual is given to following an emotional response, such as the reliance upon hope, rather than going to evidence and to logic, which would serve them far more effectively. There are different ways that hope misleads the victim. For instance, when the narcissist comes back again, hope invariably raises its head. For those of my kind who are aware, we rely upon that hope 
as a means of controlling you, we know that you rely upon it. We know that it's important to you. For the unaware of our kind, they don't think in terms of how will hope mislead them, but they still rely upon it all of the same. The empath's turning to hope creates a susceptibility that can be exploited, that by relying upon hope, which is not a sound approach, it enables us to get, wheedle our way back in, to inveigle ourselves back into, our li into your lives, to allow us to gain that control, because you've been misled by hope. For instance, when the narcissist comes a-calling again through a hoover, issuing flattery and compliments, you're often given to thinking, I hope I don't mess it up this time. Those of you that are of particularly self-flagellating nature are led to believe, incorrectly, that the demise of the relationship with the narcissist was entirely your fault, and therefore you believe that you're the one that messed up. This is a combination of not understanding what you were dealing with, and of course, the narcissist is always going to make sure that you understand that you were at fault. And therefore, with that mindset fully in place, you end up believing that when the narcissist comes again, that, well, I hope I don't mess things up this time. Of course, that hope proves to be false. It might be that you end up thinking, I hope it works this time. You had high hopes for what went before, but it didn't quite work out. But this time, why shouldn't it? You're a little bit wiser. You're a little bit longer in the tooth. And therefore, you end up with hope taking a hold on you and suggesting it could work this time, and thus you hope that it does. You might hope that you can minimise the problems that existed before because now you have a greater awareness of what they are. You've done some thinking. The narcissist has probably told you what the problems were, namely ones of your making and related to who you are. And now you hope you can minimise those problems because you've been fixed with knowledge about them. You can't. You are on a predestined occurrence when it comes to the narcissist. Often, the narcissist presents, particularly mid-range narcissists, with the plea of, I've changed. I did some work upon myself. I realised that I was the problem, which of course is a purely false admission, that I needed to do things in order to ensure that I affected change to ensure that it was better for the both of us. Hope jumps in on that. I hope this person has indeed changed. And thus, you are misled into giving them an opportunity to show that that is perhaps the case, getting sucked back in. It might be that the existence of a third party has caused a problem between you and the narcissist. Their flirtation, perhaps an affair, or that they left you for this individual, but they've come back telling you that it's over, promising that that person has been jettisoned. You end up hoping that that is the case. But of course, just like you, that person can also be hoovered, that they never truly go away, sometimes because they want the narcissist back because they can't understand why they have been jettisoned. In other instances, because the narcissist always has that inalienable right to return at some juncture and prey upon you again. You experience the golden period a powerful, addictive, heady occasion of where you were treated brilliantly, made a king or a queen. It was marvellous. You thought you met your soulmate. You thought you met your companion for life. You thought that this person was the one that truly cared for you, loved you, gave you everything that you wanted. It was an exciting, dizzying time. But then it all went wrong. Disengagement followed the devaluation. But hope comes along and suggests... I hope we can get it back to the way that it was. The promised land of the golden period, which is only ever reinstated by the narcissist and is never permanent. In some instances, you may be a little more high-handed with the narcissist, knowing that they were the one that was at fault. But you have the eternal belief that there is good in everybody, even though that is not the case, and that you are left hoping that they've learned their lesson that they have seen how they behaved and they won't repeat those behaviours again. 
duly informed, perhaps after you lecturing them on the error of their ways, that they appeared to listen, take it all in, and surely have made those modifications. When the narcissist returns to hoover you, those are just some of the ways that hope can mislead you. Recognise all of those things I've described are manifestations of emotional thinking, and you should not follow them. We rely upon that hope misleading you, making it all the more easy for us to draw you back into the relationship, or at least to have another nibble at you by way of that hoover. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.